Hi, my name is Joseph Gregory Mahoney. I'm a professor of politics and international relations with East China Normal U uh, University. Uh, in a previous career, I was trained as an epidemiologist and worked for the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, I was stuck in the United States for two years during the, the failed COVID policies there, and I returned to China last December. What we've seen in China is an unprecedented public health achievement. While we know that the political, economic, and social controls of cost are high, we know that failing costs even more. In the U.S., for example, deaths are high above a million, with many scholars believing this represents a significant undercount. COVID infections are now produced by a so-called COVID soup of multiple mutations, including many that are increasingly capable of invading vaccines. Life expectancy in 2019 in the U.S. was 79. It's now dropped to 76. We've seen many efforts over the past several months to make controls less onerous uh, and more efficient. Uh, domestic and even international travel has improved significantly. Quarantine requirements have been shortened by almost two-thirds. Local capacities have become more professionalized, and so on. So while many are unrealistically hopeful for a quick exit from uh, dynamic uh, zero COVID, what we're seeing instead is an orderly, gradualist transition that accounts for China's unique demographic challenges. Even though I trained and worked as an epidemiologist, even though I understand the science and the policies, even though I support dynamic zero COVID uh, rationally, emotionally, I'm also tired of the pandemic. However, this policy isn't guided by my feelings. It's guided by the aim that I and many other can continue to have feelings at all. We can't let emotions or a lack of critical perspective cloud our capacities for reason and self-preservation. COVID mortality is still substantially higher than mortality associated with normal flu or pneumonia. I think there are three questions we still have to answer. First, what do we mean by a return of normal life? We can have this life that we have now, which isn't normal, or we can have a different life like what they have in the US, which for millions isn't normal either. Or we can seek a different path, which I think is what we're trying to do in China presently, feeling the stones by crossing the river. This includes new policies that aim to ensure livelihoods while fighting COVID-19 resurgences, which are currently being implemented. Second, what does victory look like? On the one hand, we've already seen a tremendous victory in the fight against COVID in China. On the other hand, is a final victory possible? Have we simply delayed the inevitable or have we bought people more time, time to live, time to prepare for relaxed controls, time for the outbreak to stabilize a bit? Third, is there a tipping point where the cost outweigh the benefits or the challenge outpaces ability? The social, political, and economic costs are quite high. We all know this. It's a heavy burden. Can we continue just a bit longer to try to consolidate our gains, or do we risk letting go too quickly in the middle of winter and overwhelming our health systems in big, in, in big cities and limited facilities in rural areas? In fact, China has innovated control methods, improved them, and demonstrated their efficacy by saving millions of lives. International critics of the policy grossly underestimate the global public health value of the controls, which aside from protecting roughly 20% of the world's population, which lives in China itself, has also suppressed countless new mutations and new economic disruptions that would have further imperiled global supply chains.